afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Fort Laramie High School for today's MLK Classic featuring the St. Mary's Rough Riders and the Lexington Minutemen. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Tom Von Sossen and our entire WOSN crew. And, Tom, we've got a great matchup here. We sure aren't short on star power with these two teams. Yeah, obviously, uh, the team that plays best is going to win these games today, and this one included. But, uh, yeah, if you want to look at a couple of individuals that you're, you know, if all things work out like they should, you're going right. to watch play uh, beyond high school. Of course, Austin Parks for St. Mary's, the big 6'11 center who's committed to play and will play it uh, for the Ohio State Buckeyes next season and maybe a little farther down the road. But uh, Lexington has a highly, highly regarded freshman in Braden Fogel, a 6'6 freshman who uh, already has Power 5 Division One offers and uh, it yeah, comes with a lot of hype on a very good Lexington team, uh, undefeated at this point in the season. St. Mary's comes into this contest at 6-5 and five and 2-2 two and two in the WBL. Their losses include Defiance, Dublin, Jerome, Spencerville, Finley, and OG. Took a couple of tough losses last week. Take a look at Lexington. They come in at 12-0, 8-0 in the Ohio Cardinal Conference. And as you said, Braden Fogel, the 6'4 freshman, averages almost 14 a game. He's got offers from Texas A&M and Arizona State. So a really, really complete Lexington team against a St. Mary's team that struggled as of late. Yeah, you know, St. Mary's uh, coach Hegemeyer, he's uh, – he definitely bulked the schedule up with yes, with Austin Parks playing, and and, the, and their schedule's been as good as anybody's or better around. Unfortunately, they haven't won as many of those as maybe he had hoped. Guard play is the big issue for them. Uh, got to watch them against Ottawa Glendorf last Friday, and they just had all kinds of trouble with the Ottawa Glendorf pressure defense. Not sure Lexington uh, will play that way. That a lot of times they don't, and and they they have a lot of size themselves. So, you know, we're looking at two teams with. You know, uh, six players, maybe a six-five or better on the floor here starting lineup. So yeah, you take a look at both these squads and St. Mary's. They go six eleven, six seven, six six across the front line, and of course Lexington no slouch in their own right at six seven, six four, and six eight. So a lot of size on the floor. Yeah, and the six eight uh, four up, I believe, is their leading scorer. It, it's not the freshman; he's second leading scorer. So uh, you know, Lexington had a lot of guys back from a solid uh, district final team last year. Year, and then they just, you know, added the freshman into the mix, and the results have been a 12-0 start. So we are just about ready to get this one underway. And they'll tip the ball off. Austin Parks, the Ohio State commit, as he's in the middle of the floor, and St. Mary's will control the ball. This is number five, Cobain Owens for the Rough Riders. This is Parks out top. So swing it to the left side, back into Parks on the block. This is Parks. Kick it back out, back into Parks. Park with the turnaround. Off the back iron, rebound comes down to Lexington. A good offense, inside out action, repost, and a nice shot in the lane. Just caught back rim, didn't go. This is Hudson Moore, the senior. He'll go over to Fogel. Fogel, the freshman we've talked about so much here in the pregame. Lexington comes in averaging 65.5 a game. Defensively, they give up 48 a game. Little turnaround jumper off the back iron. Rebound comes down. Rebound comes down to Jace Turner, the 6'7 junior. St. Mary's will come down, set it up again. St. Mary's offensively is averaging 59 a game. Defensively, they gave up 55.4 a game. Another missed shot by the Rough Riders. This is Fogel, the freshman. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor. The left-hander goes to the middle of the floor, kicks it back out. Swing the ball to the left side of the floor. 6.48 to go. Danny Work, Tom Von Sossen from Fort Army High School. This is Fogel in the middle, and he goes up and gets the deuce. Nice cut without the ball. Fogel's man turned his head, looked at, stared at the basketball, and he slipped behind him. Good, good work without the basketball. Braden Fogel opens the scoring for the Lexington Minute and makes it 2 to nothing on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Perola. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of all seamless spouting. Another missed shot by the Rough Riders. This is Fogel on the right side. How, how tough is it, Tom, when you have a freshman who's getting all the headlines to, to come into a, to a team, a, a really good team, and uh, well, and there it goes, Fogel again. You see it right there. They look for him. That's got to be tough for him to come in and, and play right away. I, I think it is, but especially a team with a lot of experience back, as I said, yes. which Lexington does. But, uh, you know, I think maybe, uh, you know, they're not – they're not dumb. They're upper class, but <laughs> they see how good this kid can be and what he can do to their team as far as, you know, helping them be successful. And, and, uh, and you know, if the youngster comes in with a, 
with a humble attitude, willing to work hard and earn respect to his teammates. You can get good results. And, you know, at 12 and 0, they've gotten great results thus far. Absolutely. And it's funny you should say that. I read an article this week in my preparation for the game, and it talked about the seniors just taking him under their wing, and he's been so humble. And they talk about his work ethic and how hard he works, and he's just a great teammate. There's the Rough Riders go back into Parks, a little turnaround. Nice job by Austin Parks. Austin Parks knocks in the deuce. He makes it 4-2 to two on the Altman Outdoor scoreboard. Good job. A little patience. Assessed the situation. Made a strong move and finished. Ball gets away from back into Fogle. A little turnaround. My goodness. There you see the athleticism, Tom. Brayden Fogle's got all six for the Minutemen. Yeah, great finish. And he's done all his work without the basketball so far. Just uh, very active away from the ball. Cutting at the right time to the right spot. As they lead 6-2 to two on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Dribble drive on the left side. The ball's blocked by Fogel. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor. Ball goes in. Oh, off the, off the knees. That's to number 32, Baden Forup, the 6'7 forward. He's averaging 16 a game for the Minutemen. He is the leading scorer on the team. First time we've seen either team try to get out in a fast break situation, and it was there, just unable to handle the pass. A little full court pressure by the Minutemen as they'll make St. Mary's bring it all the way up the floor. They'll set it back up. This is Cobain Owens out for the Rough Riders. A nice job by Austin Parks to go baseline and get the little jumper there. And he makes it 6-4 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, so far, Lexington not sending a double team or aggressive double team at Parks. And Austin's probably thinking, uh, this, this is a good deal because uh, I've seen a lot of that this year. So. I'll take that all day. There's a steal by the Rough Riders. Here comes Owens with the ball. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor. Parks is signaling. He wants the ball down low. He'll kick it back out. He'll go baseline on the right side. Fogel with active hands. He tries to steal the ball. Three ball on the way from the right side. That's off the iron. Rebound comes down. A little scrum for the ball. Controlled by the Rough Riders. A great job by Braden Solomon of corralling that ball. As they'll go back into Parks, who's guarded at the high post. This is Owens again with a little dribble drive on the right side as he knifes through the defense. Oh. Ball goes off the rim. Yeah, good drive. About halfway down, came out on him. Here come the Miniman. Three ball from the top of the key, and it's good. Number 21, Elijah Hudson, the 6'8 junior. I'm telling you, Tom, when you're 6'8 and you got range like that, they got to respect it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Lexington with a, a first name Hudson, Hudson Moore, and Elijah Hudson. <laughs> See how many times I messed that up. Oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> Here goes Parks with the ball. He'll swing it back out to Owens, back into Parks as he guarded heavily. A little turnaround goes off the iron. Rebound comes down. Number 21 for the Rough Riders. Back into Parks on the block. Back out to Owens. 3-10 to go. Lexington up 9-4 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Parks with their little move, and he hammers it home. Austin Parks with the dribble drive and the dunk. And we'll take a timeout. There's a timeout on the floor. We're going to take one here in the booth. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back here at Fort Loramie High School for the MLK Classic, featuring the Lexington Miniman and the St. Mary's Memorial Rough Riders. Tom, right away, we see both teams go to their go-to guys. Braden Fogel's got eight. Austin Parks, all six for St. Mary's. Yeah, and we mentioned Fogel doing a lot of work without the basketball, and his teammates doing a good job of finding him. Parks is getting a lot of touches. Uh, you know, he's got the ball in a post at least once, I think, every possession. So, you know, St. Mary's wants to run their offense through him every time if they can. I'd, I'd do that. I would too. <laughs> a 6'11 D1 commit. There's Fogel from the top of the key. It goes in and out, almost in. Fogel falls down. Rebound comes down to Austin Parks. This is Evan Anksman for the Riders. He'll kick it back out to Owens. On the left side, Parks posting up, calling for the ball. A lot of activity in the middle of that floor as they are pounding on each other. Parks. It's a great job of passing the ball. Shot goes up off the back of the rim. Fogel with the rebound. He'll bring it down the middle. And the Riders, not named Parks, have had some good looks, just haven't got anything to fall yet. This is Fogel on the baseline. Throws the ball away. Intercepted by the Rough Riders. Denny Morris says it's going back to St. Mary's. And that time the freshman got himself buried on the baseline, got up in the air with nothing really to do with the basketball. Results in a turnover. Nine six two oh four to go. 
Lexington leads on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Danny Elmer, Tom Bond, Sassen from Fort Laramie High School for the second annual MLK Classic. Liberty Benton won the first game over Anna. In the second game, Rushi defeated Willard. So three ball on the way, and it's good. Braden Sullivan, the six-foot senior, knocks in the triple, and he ties it up 9-9 nine, nine on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Again, inside out, Parks gets the touch. Those shots are going to be available to the Riders. They just got to knock some down that time the lefty did. Here comes Lexington. Alex Depperschmidt in the game. There's Fogel again. Braden Fogel. You just see how special he is, Tom. He's so smooth when he gets the ball on the baseline. Really cuts hard in the basket. He does, and, and, and the ability to finish. You, you know, you, you've got Parks in there at 6'11". That's not easy, and so far it has not affected the youngster. Tom, we take a look at, at a player like Austin Parks, 6'11", and he's obviously a skilled player. What does he have to work on at the next level that you can see? Well, I mean... You know, I think all around you shoot the ball a little better, but I'm really impressed. His size is good. Yes, certainly, it is. Certainly uh, he'll get a lot stronger once they get you in college and, and get you in the weight room more consistently and dominate what you eat and your, pretty much your lifestyle. But, you know, you mentioned the skills are there. The feet are good. The hands are good. He's a good, willing passer. And here's another nice There's turnaround shot. Really yeah. nice job. Austin Parks. Parks with a turnaround. Parks has eight of St. Mary's 11. I mean, I... Obviously not a college coach, but I don't sure. see anything that's uh, that's really going to hold him back. You know, if the work ethic's there and he continues to improve, it may not happen right away next year. But uh, you know, I, th I think he's going to be a solid Big Ten player. I, I I completely agree with you. There's Braden Fogel with the dribble drive, and Austin Parks comes down with that rebound. Here come the Riders, 11-11. They'll go back into Parks. Nice move on the left side. And you can see how quick he is and how agile he is. And he steps out for the three ball. This is everything there. Here come the Minutemen down the middle of the floor. This is Depperschmidt. Go back to Fogel. Fogel with the dribble drive between his legs. Back to Depperschmidt. Goes to the right side. Yeah, four up, you mentioned 17 or 16 a game there, leading scorer. Really hasn't done anything yet offensively. Well, he but, has not. But he likes to post up. But of course, you got Parks playing it in the middle. Makes it more difficult. Five on the shot clock, and Fogel loses the ball out of bounds, and they're going to say it goes back to the Minutemen. And number 24, Evan Anksman, had his hands on the ball, but they're going to say it goes back to Lexington with 4.5 seconds to go. 11-11, four seconds to go here in the first quarter. Another freshman in the game for Lexington, Joe Cottle, 6'4 freshman. Three-quarter shot from way downtown. Misses everything after one quarter from Fort Laramie High School. St. Mary's 11, Lexington 11. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School. Second quarter's getting started here. St. Mary's and Lexington all knotted up at 11. You know, Danny, uh, I think you said second annual MLK Classic here. These uh, you know, one-day events where they'll play multiple games are starting to become more popular. Yeah, of course, you have the Flying to the Hoop down sure. in Kettering uh, tomorrow, which has been around for a while. I've been to that several times. Uh, yeah. Lima Senior has one uh, before Christmas that took a place. Uh, Ottawa Glendorf will have four games coming up in February, teams from around the state. So it's a great way to get out and watch a lot of basketball and a lot of good players. Lexington with the ball down low. That's Depper Schmidt as the six foot guard yeah. goes amongst the Depper trees Schmidt. and knocks in the deuce to give Lexington the lead at 13 11. Yeah, small and small of stature. Didn't bother <laughs> him, went inside and got the score. Nice job by that young man. Here comes St. Mary's again. Everything goes back through Austin Parks as he's guarded heavily down low. And a nice, strong move, and he's going to go to the foul line. Austin Parks averages 18.8 on the year. He averages 80% from the free throw line, so a solid yeah. contributor at the line. That's the first foul on either team, so an entire first quarter. And and um, I mean, I, and a lot of physical play, too. Yeah, physical play, but, you know, I think the officials have been fair both ways. And Parks knocks down the first one. A lot of big bodies in the post today, and they're letting them bank some, but as long as not, someone's not getting an advantage over something, they're letting some things go on. Parks has nine on the Knights to lead the Riders. They'll let the second one fly. Goes off the front iron. 13-12, Lexington leads. And as soon as we say yeah. one foul, we've got a second one, Tom. <laughs> yeah, we'll reach in, uh, 
You don't know, like fouls 84 feet from your basket, but <laughs> when you're not in the bonus, it's not that's so right. bad. Fouls on Evan Engsman. That's their first. That's their team first. Two fouls there in uh, two quarters, so not too bad. Here come the minute men with 7.14 to go. Lexington undefeated on the year at 12 and 0, 8 and 0 in the Ohio Cardinal Conference. Had a tough one the other night against Ashland Friday night. Played to a 55-53 win, and they had played them earlier in the year and handled them really uh, by a wide margin. But uh, Friday night, uh, you know, it's tough to beat two teams in your league. Yeah. And uh, they did it. So nice move inside by number 32. That's Baden four up a 6-7 senior goes up against Parks, and the ball goes off the iron. A lot of move, or a lot of bodies hitting the floor, but nothing being called. Here come the Riders. Back into Park at the high post. He squares up, takes a little jumper off the back iron. Rebound comes down, number 22 for this Riders, Jace Turner. The 6'7 forward there. You see size does matter there. It does. You see Lexington really looks like maybe a concerted effort to increase ball pressure this quarter as they're really getting up in the St. Mary's offensive players. And now we got to hold off the ball. I think they're going to get going to get four up holding Parks away from the basket. Well, you know as good as uh, anybody, Tom, that a good post defense starts with ball pressure on the perimeter, and you're watching Lexington really get up in those guards right now. Yep, trying to take away their vision, get them to concentrate on the man in front of them and not the man who's posting up. This is Parks from the three line on the left side. He'll swing it back outside. This is Owens with the ball. They'll go back to Park at the high post. Evan Anksman. Nice drive by Anksman. The 6'6 six, six junior knocks in the deuce, and he makes it 14-13 on the Altman Outdoor scoreboard. Ball screen by Parks, high in the wing, and Axman came off free, no help. There's another steal by the Riders as they are playing really good defense right now. Here comes Anksman again. He's going to drive in, and he's going to be fouled before the shot. No, the Denny Moore says that's going to be two shots, and I thought they got him before the shot went up, but they're saying two shots. I'm not sure who the fans. 22, yeah, I thought too. Maybe it was out on the floor, but it's going to say that... Uh, he was picking the ball up and in the shooting, shooting beginning the shooting two. process. So got Hudson Moore on the foul. That'll send Anksman to the line for two shots. First one in the air goes off the back iron. 5:40 to go for Longley High School. St. Mary's leads Lexington 14-13. Second annual MLK Classic. Nice crowd on hand today, Tom. Lots of people down here watching basketball. We've had three great or two great games in front of this one. We've got. Three more after this one, so lots of great players, lots of great teams. Yeah, I mean, competing against the NFL today, so <laughs> right. you're right. The right. crowd is really an excellent crowd. It is. A little jumper from the left side goes in and out. I thought that one was down. That was 32. Baden four off the six seven senior. They'll go back to the corner. Three ball from the right side goes off the mark. That was Braden Sullivan, the six foot senior, as he misses the three. Comes down to the minute, minute. Here they come on the drive. Three ball on the right side, and it's good. Hudson Moore knocks in the triple. He's got three on the night, and he gives the Minutemen the 16-15 lead. Moore knocked down the three, but great job point guard A.J. Young to penetrate deep into that St. Mary's defense and then kick it out to a wide open Moore. This is Parks again from the left side. Three ball from the top of the key, and it's good. Jace Turner, and we got three balls flying everywhere, Tom. 18-16, St. Mary's takes back the lead. Yeah, that comes off again, a pass into Parks, and then the kick out. <laughs> if that pass would have been through there, again, A.J. Young with a really nice look. He saw a cutting uh, player from Lexington go to the rim, and he tried to get the ball down low, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, Forbes had a couple passes now. A little low on the bounces, one in transition, and that time on a roll to the basket, unable to, had he collected, he would have scored both times, but off his leg and out of bounds. This is Anksman on the left side. They'll go back to Owens. Owens goes between his legs, looks inside. Little turnaround from the right side. Goes off the left side. Fogel with the rebound. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor. Nice drive by Braden Fogel. They're going to say he charged. Yeah. Braden Fogel got the rebound, brings it down all the way, and he goes into the defender, and they're going to say it's a personal one, Fogel. Yeah, it was Austin Parks, and you, know, you expect you being the 
uh, aggressor there with the ball that the 6'11 guy is going to try to block that shot instead. Parks held his ground, set up, great defensive position. Got the player control foul, turnover on Lexington. You know, when you watch Fogel play, Tom, it's hard to believe he's a 14-year-old freshman. He just handles himself so well, and he's so mature, and he's got, you know, he's got a, a big kid body. He looks really yeah. well developed. Yeah, he does not look like a, a typical freshman. No, he does not. This is Owens with a nice little move to the left side. They'll try to go back inside. Jace Turner was posting up. Now he comes out. Parks will cut down the middle of the alley. He posts up on the left side. He'll kick it back out. Nice job by Owens. Tried to go back to Parks, and it went out of bounds. It'll go back to Lexington. And Austin Parks says to Denny Morris, I didn't touch it. Yeah. I didn't touch it. Yeah, I don't know that he did, but he did swipe at it. And uh, you know, sometimes you get real close as the official. Denny Morris thought he did. Turnover for St. Mary's. St. Mary's is guided by longtime legendary coach Dan Hegemeyer. The Minutemen of Lexington under the direction of Scott Hamilton. Scott Hamilton's been there a while too. Not as long yes, as has. not long as not as long as Hagemeyer. Uh, you know, he's a really a legend in high school coaching. Oh, nice job on the backside. Ball goes in and out. Fogel with his rebound goes back up against Parks and he scores. Wow. Braden Fogel. My goodness, he was going up against Austin Parks and he knocks in the deuce and he gives Lexington, well, actually it's tied at 18 off. He did a great job. His off shoulder, his right shoulder, put that right in Parks' check, chest and take it away his leaping ability and then finished over him with the left. They'll swing it back to the left side. Three ball on the way. Goes off the back iron. Rebound comes down to the Minutemen. They'll take off running. Nice dribble drive there by number 21. That was Elijah Hudson, but he's blocked. Look out. Here comes Parks with a big time jam. Austin Parks is flexing his muscle right now. That's the second time he's went for the home run slam. It looked like Lexington had a fast break basket, but great job by Jace Turner to get back and block that shot, and then that led to transition the other way, and Parks soaring in for the hammer. <laughs> Tom, we are seeing some athletic moves right now for both of these squads and size all around the boards. Just a great job so far with 2.14 to go here until halftime. St. Mary's leads 2018 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Fogel again as he's guarded out top. He's going to go try to go baseline. He'll kick it back out. Dribble drive from the left side and a nice left-handed move by Hudson Moore, the 6'3 senior who averages 10.5 a game. A little dipsy do Dunkaroo there as he goes up and under to get the douche. Yeah, again, four up leading score, scoreless. So he's held in check. I think again, I think Parks a lot to do with that, but Hudson Moore and, and Fogel picking up the slack. This is Anksman on the right side. Back to, oh, they tried the alley oop to Austin Parks, and the ball goes off of Parks' hands as he hangs on the rim to protect himself. Great so, set, yeah, Dan, sorry, great set play that time. Weak side back screen to get Parks on the alley oop opportunity. Pass just maybe a little too far to the left. He tried to reach back and collect and unable to. When I saw the backside guy go to the low post and I saw Parks coming, I knew he was setting the screen and I knew that was going to happen there, so good call by you, Tom. See if they go back to it later in the game. Nice job there, trying to get underneath that screen by number 32, Baden Forop, as he misses the shot again. Forop is 16 a game. And he is held scoreless so far by St. Mary's. They'll go back into Parks. Parks is guarded by four up, and a nice job of Parks getting underneath there, but he misses the shot as it goes off the rim. We're under a minute to go here in the second period. And Turner with a putback opportunity, crashing the glass, unable to get it to go either. This is Fogel again, left-handed little turnaround. It goes off the iron. Rebound comes down to four up, and he'll score from the right side. Uh, two St. Mary's players going for that rebound, just kind of knocked it away from each other. And Baden Forbes says, thank you very much. He's got to feel good about that, Tom, because he is finally off the snide. He's got two now. Maybe he can get going now. I'm sure his coach would hope that's the case. 30 seconds to go. Lexington leads 22-20. Nice back cut and a nice little and dribble drive there by Braden Sullivan. He goes on the left side, puts it up, and he ties it up at 22. And they lob the ball to the high post to, to Austin Parks, and you know, Austin understands everybody's going to turn and look when he gets the basketball, and Braden Sullivan understood that too and made a great backdoor cut, good find, and a good finish.
Coming in for number 21, Elijah Hudson, the 6'8 junior, is back in the game. He got a short rest there, so they'll use his size. Now St. Mary's not going deep at all, just uh, one substitution so far. He's pretty much riding with the first five. Lexington, you know, a little bit off the bench, but yeah, they, you're, you're they exactly too. Right. Both teams really relying on the, on the starters. That's a great call, Tom. They have not got a lot of substitutes on the floor here. There's a three ball from the top of the key. Kind of an ill-advised shot there as he was fading away. St. Mary's goes back down low. Tried to get the ball to Jace Turner, and it goes off Jace's hands. And it'll go back to the Lexington Minutemen with 1.3 to go until halftime. St. Mary's going to drop back. Depper Schmidt's going to let it go. Try to get a shot off from half court. Shot goes up off Ooh. the rim, and he almost scores. So after one half from Fort Laramie at the ML Clay, MLK Classic, excuse me, St. Mary's leads 23-22. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School for the second half of today's MLK Classic between the Lexington Minimum and the St. Mary's Rough Riders. After one half, St. Mary's leads 23-22. And Tom, we take a look at both teams and, and the, the players that we profiled before the game, Austin Parks and Braden Fogel are doing their job. But you look at someone like Baden Forop, Lexington's number one scorer at 16 a game. He's only got two on the afternoon. Yeah, and that's you know, that's a concern. And and you know, for St. Mary's, they did start to get. And Parks has 11, as you mentioned, but I think he had their first eight of the game. Yes, you're right. He yeah. did start to get some balance in that second period. Hit a, a couple of threes. Uh, Sullivan hit one, I believe. Turner hit one. Saw Sullivan with a great backdoor cut and a finish. So, you know, that's going to need to continue for St. Mary's. And you know, obviously, Lexington's going to want to get four up going. And a great matchup up top. K Coben Owens and A.J. Young really getting after it on the defensive end there. This is Angsman goes back out to Parks as they'll set back up the offense. And I mentioned going back to the alley-oop play. They did right there to start the half, but You're right, Lexington was all over it. This is Angsman tries to go to the high post. Back out to Owens. Owens dribble drives to the foul line. Thought about taking the three ball. Set it back up. This is Angsman. He'll go back up top to Owens. There you see Park at the high post trying to get some leverage. A little dribble drive to the baseline and a nice job by Braden Fogel of blocking Angsman. Angsman gets his own rebound and Fogel blocks it again. Ball's on the floor. Bodies are flying right now. And we're going to get a held ball situation. Yeah, great effort, both teams. Parks, you see the big guy down on the floor trying to get it. Lexington will get it on the possession, but Fogel with back-to-back -back blocks. Long arms on the young man. You know, say what you want about Austin Parks, Tom. He plays hard. He gets on the floor. He tries to get position. He does a lot of the gritty things that you look for in a kid, and I'm very impressed with that, that young man. And that will serve him well at the next level. Absolutely. There they go back inside. Ball's blocked by Parks, but there you saw Baden Forop. As, as they tried to go back into him, he averages 16 a game, two on the night right now. So four off a go to the line and try to add to his total. Kind of St. Mary's leads 23-22. Weak side back screen at the high post, got four up in a mismatch in the pros. Parks came down for the help, but I believe, uh, I think it was Cobain Owens with the reach in. Four up knocks in the first one. He's got three on the night. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of all seamless spouting. Ultimate Outdoor is our scoreboard sponsor. He knocks in the second one. Now he's got four on the night. And Lexington takes the 24-23 lead on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. Yeah, that play there kind of reminds me. My old coaching days at Ottawa had a fortune to have a couple of 6'8 guys and always drove me nuts when a guard would come in and get a reaching foul <laughs> when your 6'8 guy was there to block it. And yep. like, don't let him go. <laughs> this is Owens with the ball up top. They'll go back into Parks. Parks is guarded big time. Oh, nice. And a nice move, but it goes off the iron. Rebound comes down. That's Jace Turner with the rebound. Owens with the three ball, and he knocks it in. Owens. Coben Owens knocks in the three, and he gives the Riders the 26-24 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. That's all the difference for St. Mary's when their guards can knock some of those open shots down, because, again, they're going to get them because of the attention Barks draws. 
There's a little fadeaway jumper on the right side. That was number 21 for the Minutemen, Elijah Hudson. Ball comes short, and rebound comes down to Austin Parks. He'll bring it down. He goes to the middle of the floor, brings it himself, wow. and a nice drive by Austin Parks. That was impressive, Coach. It was, and it caught Lexington totally by surprise. I don't think they had any idea he was going to take it coast to coast down the lane to the finish. Parks has got 13 on the night. He gives the Raiders the 28-24 lead and a nice back cut. Nice job Elijah by number 21, Hudson. Elijah Hudson, the 6'8 oh. junior. And the ball goes back to the Minutemen. I think that Sullivan was thinking he was going to take the ball out and was headed towards the baseline. They flipped it to him, almost stepping on it when he caught it. Back into Fogel, and a nice job by Braden Fogel as he had to get his body under control, and he gets it in with the left hand, and it's tied up at 28. And St. Mary's gets out to a four-point lead. And Lexington erases that in about three seconds. Fogel's got 12 on the night. This is Sullivan. It goes back to Parks. Parks with the ball up top. Back over to Owens. Parks sets a screen for Owens, and he'll dribble drive to the middle of the floor. Ball gets swatted away, but the rebound comes down to Braden Sullivan. And he lost, lost it. He was trying to get it out of that mess, trying to get it out of the trees, but lost the dribble on the way out. Lexington with a chance to retake the lead. This is A.J. Young, the point guard for Lexington. Swinging back over. Fogel tries to cut in front of him. They'll go back to A.J. Young. Gets a screen. They'll go back inside to Forup. And he knocks in the little jumper there. Aiden Forup's got six. He's got the last four for Lexington. So you see what they talked about at halftime, Tom. Yeah. It's a concerted effort to get him the ball. And they switched the ball screen that time. And Forup ended up with a small guard on him and not Parks. There's a nice drive on the right side. That was Evan Angsman, but the ball goes out of bounds. St. Mary's will take it out underneath their basket. 4.25 to go. Lexington leads 30-28 on the out ultimate outdoor scoreboard. This is Austin Parks as he pushes the ball downstairs. Nice, nice little jumper there. Chase Turner, Turner knocks in. And a great job. Caught it, kept it high. Assess the situation, no extra movement, just a nice turnaround jump hook right in the middle of the lane. Turner's got five on the night, he ties it up at 30 apiece. This is Fogel with the ball up top, running a little wheel action. Three ball from the left side, off the mark, rebound comes down, it's corralled by Braden Sullivan. He'll bring it up the floor, and they are guarding heavy all the way up the floor. He gets the ball up to Jace Turner. Turner finds Owens driving to the basket, and he travels. Jace, excuse me, Coben Owens had the bucket, and he just traveled there. Yeah, he didn't catch it clean, which, you know, that actually allowed him an extra step, but then still ended up taking one too many. 3.44 to go. Danny Holbrook, Tom Von Sossen from Fort Laramie High School, MLK Classic. St. Mary's in Lexington all knotted up at 30. There's a three ball on the way from Young off the iron. Rebound comes down to Parks. He looks to outlet it. He gets it out to Angsman on the left side. Angsman is guarded heavily by Elijah Hudson. He gets away from him. <laughs> got to drive the basket, but Coach Hegemeyer wants to talk about it. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 3.22 to go. St. Mary's in Lexington knotted up at 30. Back here at Fort Laramie High School. We're all knotted up at 30 with 322 to go. And Tom, we talked about it off the air, but uh, we talked about Lexington coming out and applying that ball pressure and trying to take away those easy looks into the paint. Yeah, they are, and, and you know, they are creating a, a, some turnovers, especially in this third period. But on the other end, back to back three point attempts by Lexington. I don't think Coach Hamilton was thrilled with that. They, you know, we're getting some success around the basket. That it's, it's a team that doesn't shoot a lot of threes. And, I think he'd rather see a little more patience trying to get the ball inside. Here come the Riders with 3.15 to go. They'll go back to Owens out top. He's guarded by Young. There's Austin Parks with the ball up top of the key. They'll go back into Parks on the, on the post there. Little turnaround from the right side. It goes off the iron. Nice rebound. The ball goes away. It's on the floor. Let's see. It's going to go back to Lexington. So they tried to go into the post. And number 22 for St. Mary's, that was Jace Turner as the ball gets away from him. Yeah, strong rebound by Turner, and he did a good job gathering himself. He's ready to go back up, but 
Depper Schmidt, again, smallest guy on the floor, sneaking around the backside, knocking that away. Two fifty-one to go, third quarter here. St. Mary's and Lexington all knotted up at 30. This is A.J. Young. He'll swing it across to Baden Forop. He'll go back inside. Tries to go up and under, but the ball goes off the iron. It goes out of bounds. It'll go back to St. Mary's. And Hudson Moore, nice lean in, in the lane, just unable to get it up over the front of the rim. And, and we stay tied. As, Boy, they've uh, got, what, four points? Maybe the biggest lead in this game. Yeah, you're right. And they, you know, you look at Lexington and their sizes, they're, they're, they're big everywhere, Tom. At 6'4 and 6'8, 6'3, 6'7. We talk about Parks' size of 6'11, and St. Mary's is no slouch either with 6'6 six, six and 6'5. Six, so we're back into Parks. A little turnaround. Nice little baby hook there on the right side, and he knocks it in. Austin Parks, he's got 15 to lead all scores on the night. Again, no double when he has a chance to go on one. St. Mary's will take that all day. And there's a beautiful drive by number 22, Hudson Moore, the 6'3 senior who averages 10.5 a game. He's got seven on the afternoon. And look at Parks bring the ball up again. 32 all with 157 to go. They'll go back to Parks on the left side. He'll kick it back out. Angsman thought about driving to the rim. Kick it back out to Owens. They'll go back to Parks in the middle of the floor. A little turnaround jumper. Off the back iron. Rebound comes down. Here comes the Minutemen. This is Depperschmidt. He'll go to the left side, three ball on the way, and it's good. Hudson Moore knocks in the triple. He's got 10 on the night, and Lexington takes the 35-32 lead. Five straight for Moore, scoring at the rim, and that time, nice kick out by Depper Schmidt, wide open in the corner. They'll double team the ball up top as Depper Schmidt and Galvin Husty are coming up, and they were both going after Owens right there in the middle of the floor. Ball goes out of bounds, and they'll say that's a foul. They'll take the foul to number four, Alex Depperschmidt. That's his second. And right away, they try to go back into Austin Parks, and Baden Forop was guarding him really tightly, and he's going to get a personal. Probably a good foul because Parks was going to catch. Yes, turn he and, was. Turn and flush, I believe. The nice little out-of-bounds play from the sideline cleared out all help, and uh, Forup recognized that, went ahead and committed to foul. There's Angsman as he tries to dribble drive to the left side. He gets caught up by the defense. He'll go back to Austin Parks. Good matchup down low as Baden Forop, a 6'7 senior, is guarding Austin Parks. Baden's at 6'7. Austin's listed at 6'11. I think if Austin didn't do anything, maybe he, he gives up that good low position sometimes and they let him, he lets, allows himself to get sure. pushed wide of the lane a little bit. Not that he's not capable of scoring from Absolutely, 10, 12 feet, right. but if he can catch it at six or seven, it's usually game over. This is Parks, he'll kick it back out. He'll go back out to Galvin Husty. Nice cut there. This is 22 for St. Mary's as he knocks in the little jumper. Jace Turner as he goes to the rim, they reward him with the ball and he knocks in the jumper. 34-35, Lexington continues to lead. There again, you see Parks willing to pass the ball. Excellent passer out of that low post. AJ Young's gonna bring it up for Lexington. Excuse me, this is Depper Schmidt as he's guarded up top. He's gonna get a foul on number 11, Braden Sullivan, six foot senior. Foul on number 11, Braden Sullivan. 22.8 seconds to go. Lexington leads 35 34 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Again, you look at Lexington, four up in. Hudson Moore, obviously two key parts, seniors, and A.J. Young, the starting point guard, who's not in right now, a senior. But outside of that, it's really a, a young team. Very young, you're right. They're gonna hold for the last shot here in the third quarter with 11 seconds to go, and they're gonna take a timeout. So with 10 seconds to go, they're gonna take a timeout. We'll take a timeout, we'll come back right after these messages. Timeout. Welcome back to Fort Laurie High School. With 10.8 seconds to go here in the third quarter, Lexington leads 35-34. They've got the ball. Tom, what do you see them doing with this last shot here? Well, St. Mary's was in a zone defense uh, on that possession when they called the timeout. I guess first thing, it'll be interesting to see if the Rough Riders change it up. And it looks like they're still gonna maybe stay in that zone look with Austin Parks right out top. 
Now they're matching up man now. I was going to say, they're, they're, they've found their men, and Braden Fogel is going to bring the ball over. He's going to take it out of bounds closer to us. They'll inbounds it down to nine seconds. They'll kick it over to the left side. Three ball on the way, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Turner. Turner looks to get the shot up, go to the middle of the floor. Shot goes up and off the mark. So after three quarters, St. Mary's and Lexington. Lexington leads 35-34. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Fort Laramie High School, where we start the fourth quarter of the MLK Classic between St. Mary's and Lexington. Lexington with a one-point advantage at 35-34. Austin Parks doing the damage for St. Mary's today as he leads all scores with 15. Yeah, for, we're tied after, after one. Uh, St. Mary's one-point lead at the halftime break, and now Lexington one-point lead after, after three, and that's how it's been from opening tip, just back and forth, no team able to really put any distance between each other. And, I expect the fourth quarter to be more of the same. And you, you see Lexington's got Braden Fogel on the bench right now, and he's not in foul trouble. And you just wonder if, uh, if what's going on with that situation. Here goes the Rough Riders back into Parks, and a nice strong move on the left side. Austin Parks shows you his good footwork there as he goes around his man and knocks in the deuce. Yeah, real nice quick move on the baseline. 36-35, St. Mary's leads on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. They'll go back into four up, four up. Nice little half hook guarded by Parks. And there you saw Baden four up as he tries to go up against Austin Parks and it just goes off the mark and they'll go back to Lexington. Yeah, he went strong. Nice half hook right in the middle of the lane. Just unable to get it. Good job by Hudson Moore crashing and uh, getting a second opportunity. And you know, Tom, I, I've I've covered St. Mary's quite a bit the last couple years, and this is as aggressive as I've seen Austin Parks play, and he's having a fantastic afternoon. He is getting a lot of touches, a lot of shot opportunities. Well, not just on the offensive end, too, but on the defensive end, he's making a huge difference. Comes up for the steal there. St. Mary's a chance to extend that one-point lead. Here comes St. Mary's. They're up 36-35. This is Owens with the ball out top. He'll go back to Anksman. Anksman goes over to Sullivan. They'll go back in the parks. Parks guarded by four up. Kick it back out to Anksman with the three ball, and it's good. Evan Anksman, the 6'6 junior. And you said it earlier, Tom, if they can find them and they can knock them down, that's going to be a problem for Lexington. Yeah, great look. Austin Parks, smart basketball, looks to the weak side, knows that's where the shooter's going to be. There's a really nice dribble drive by number five from Lexington, A.J. Young, as he misses the shot. But he had the position, and it just goes off the rim. Rebound comes down to St. Mary's. Four-point lead chance to get up six or more, and that just hasn't happened in this game. It's one of those games where that's a big lead. That is a year. You're absolutely right. This is Anksman with the ball. They'll go back to Jace Turner, back in the Parks. Parks turns around, faces the basket. Nice, strong move. Misses the shot. Rebound comes down to Baden Forup. He had nice position. He just misses the shot. Three ball from the left side for the Minutemen. Goes off the mark. Rebound to Forup. Puts it back in. Baden Forup's got eight on the afternoon. He had zero at halftime. He's had a nice second half. He has. Parks a little tardy getting down that time. He looks a little fatigued. I mean, he doesn't come out. He plays every second, and as you mentioned, he's Absolutely. been very active on both ends. Solomon on the left side, and it's good. Braden Solomon. Solomon knocks down the triple. That's back-to-back -back triples, Tom, and it gives St. Mary's the 42-37 lead on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Huge. I was watching Austin Parks. He was really just getting across half court. He's laboring a little bit. Needs some help, but he got it, but there's an answer. There's an answer. You're right. Elijah Hudson knocks down the triple. He's got eight on the afternoon, and he closes the gap at 42-40 with 5.30 to play. Here come the Riders. And Coach Hagenmeyer is going to take a timeout. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth with 5.26 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Back here at Fort Laramie High School with 5.26 to play. St. Mary's continues to lead 42-40. And as we've noticed, Tom, the last three trips down the floor, the three balls on the way up. Yeah, team's starting to hit from deep and different players. Uh, again, it looked like St. Mary's maybe chance to stretch it out a little bit, up four with the ball, but you know, Lexington fights right back. And I just 
If this game doesn't come down the last possession or two, I'll be surprised. Yeah, absolutely. Here come the Riders. Solomon looks to get it to Angsman. Angsman looks to go back into Parks. Back up top to Owens. Owens guarded by Depper Schmidt. He gets a screen from Parks. I thought Parks was going to dive to the basket, but he's going to stay up above the perimeter. Nice back cut. <laughs> nice job by Coban Owens as he gets the deuce, and he gives St. Mary's the 44-40 lead on the Altman Outdoor scoreboard. Again, caught Lexington standing around and staring when Parks had the ball. And, you know, besides the score, and he's had several assists tonight. Debra Schmidt gives it to Fogel, and Fogel slams it home. Oh, no. Braden Fogel. He's got 14 on the night, and he needed that, Tom. He's had a quiet second half. Yeah, been very quiet. Not many touches, but boy, impressive. He moves so well without the basketball. And they're going to get Fogel on the foul as he tries to, tries to get the steal there as he come up. And he saw that Evan Angsman had the ball, and he tried to swipe it away, and they just get him on the foul. three for Lexington, only two for St. Mary's. It continues to be a game without many fouls. See how that plays as we go down the stretch. Lexington's got the ball with 4.35 to go. They'll swing it over to Sullivan. Sullivan gets it over to Owens. They're looking into Parks. Parks guarded heavily by four up. He'll, he'll keep switching sides as he runs the middle of the floor. They'll go back into Parks, back out to Anksman. Anksman thought about three. He'll pull up for a two. Off the mark and bore up with the, with the rebound. Past the three, Lexington closed out, pulled up for the short jumper, the shorter jumper, didn't get it to go. And, and a good nice job, job there the by glass. number 22, I'm Hudson Moore, as he knocks the little jumper off the glass. And we're all nodded at 44. St. Mary's throws the ball down the floor and it gets away. It's going to go back to Lexington. Yeah, there was two guys down there, St. Mary's players, just one Lexington defender back. And Cobain Owens kind of turned around and squared up to receive the pass. And he kept running, I think. He had himself a layup, but miscommunication. And just like that, Lexington a chance to get back on top. Lexington take it out underneath their basket. They'll get the ball into Baden four up. They'll swing it around to Moore. This is Elijah Hudson. He's going to be fouled. They'll get Braden Sullivan on the foul. That's his second team third with 3.56 to go. I'll knot it up at 44 on the ultimate outdoor scoreboard. St. Mary's in a big zone now. They've got Austin Parks on top of that zone. Showed this a little bit late in the second or third period. And going back to it here. Lexington content on holding the ball here, Tom, as they're going to try to force St. Mary's to come out of that zone with 3.36 to go here in the game. We've talked about this being a fast-moving game. This, <laughs> this is going to speed that process Absolutely. up. We'll see uh, kind of a game of wills right now, how long uh, Coach... Hagemeyer's content to let Lexington hold it. Tom, the question for you here, does this favor St. Mary's to get a little breather, or does it slow down Lexington in their transition game? Well, I think it does help Austin Parks, because we said before that last time out, he was yeah. definitely showing some signs of fatigue, and uh, he's going to get a chance to catch his breath here. And, you know, at this point, what we're really doing right now is shortening up the game. We're sure. limiting the number of possessions there's going to be. I, I would be surprised that Lexington runs this all the way down. I think St. Mary's would probably be content to let them do that. But now Coach Hamilton got to call a timeout. <laughs> we'll see what strategy he has coming out of it. Lexington will take a timeout with 2.48 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Timeout. We're back here at Fort Laramie High School with two minutes and 48 seconds to go in this contest. We're all knotted up at 44. Lexington has pulled the ball out. St. Mary's is in a big zone. They've got Austin Parks up top, and uh, Lexington's going to take a timeout. What do you anticipate them doing with this offensive set, Tom? Yeah, I don't know. They I mean, basically took a little over a minute off the clock uh, and called a timeout, so I'm, I'm assuming they're going to come out and attack the basket in some form. Another question is what St. Mary's do. Do they... Uh, do they come back out in that zone look, which they haven't done a whole lot tonight, or do they go back to man-to-man -to -man and maybe try to cross what Lexington's planning in the timeout up? So, a little bit of a chess match right yeah. now between Scott or Scott Hamilton and uh, Dan Hagemeyer. It looks like St. Mary's going to stay in that zone. They're going to stay in that look, zone. Yeah, so. they've got Park up top. Vogel's going to trigger the ball inbounds. They'll get it over to Alex Depperschmidt. And they will continue holding the ball with 2.44 to go. 
So it's anybody's guess yeah. right now. And here comes St. Mary's as they'll go back into their man-to-man, -man and they'll force Lexington into an offensive set. This is Fogel up top. He is guarded by Braden Sullivan. He'll go to the right side. Little dribble drives to the middle of the floor. Oh, ball goes rough, out of yeah. bounds off of Lexington. The ball goes back to St. Mary's. So St. Mary's comes out, challenges Lexington with a man defense, and they get a takeaway. Yeah, great job. Kobe and Owen's got a hand on that, just enough to deflect it off the hands of Depperschmidt. Now St. Mary's chance to go back on top. This is Engsman with the ball up top. He's guarded by Braden Fogel. Gets it back out to Owens, 2.12 to go. All mounted up at 44. Baden four up, continues to guard Austin Parks. Angsman from the right side, back into Parks. Parks double teamed in the post. They've got four off and Hudson Moore fronting him and they've got one behind him. And they're gonna get a foul called on him. And that goes on number 22, Hudson Moore. That's his second. Just their fourth, so a couple of fouls away from free throws are the Riders. Riders with only three fouls. 11, Gavin Husty comes in the game now for Lexington. As Depper Schmidt takes his seat. Owens back into Parks. Parks looks for Angsman cutting down the right side, and it goes off the rim. It almost went in. I thought that was down, Tom, but it goes off the iron, and here comes Lexington with 150 to go. And Coach Hagemeyer wanted some contact, didn't get the call. Braden Fogel up and under, he scores. Braden Fogel, the sensational freshman, goes from the right to the left side, and he knocks in the little jumper. Yeah, so good, so creative finishing around the hole. He's got 16 on the night to lead all score. No, excuse me, he's at 16 to lead Lexington. Parks has 17 for St. Mary's. They'll go back into Parks on the low post. A little drive around them, and it goes in. Austin Parks goes from the left side to the right side. A little half hook, and he knocks it in, and he'll go to the line. Uh, this is fun, and your big time players showing up late. Great finish on one end by Fogle, and then Parks, chance to put the Riders back in front with a three-point play. Here comes Austin Parks with 127 to go, all knotted up at 46. Parks has got 19 on the night. He tries to go for 20 here, and he knocks it in. Austin Parks, the Ohio State commits, got 20. That's got to make Coach Holtman happy. No, <laughs> if he's watching. Uh, he's <laughs> we got a game today. He's got a so. game today, you're yeah. right. He's, he got to worry about Rutgers. He's, he's on a slide right he's now. He's at Piscataway. <laughs> so 1.15 to go in Lexington. They're going to be content to hold the ball out top as St. Mary's goes back into that zone. And Lexington's going to take a timeout. So with 1.04 to go, St. Mary's leads 47 46. We'll step aside. We're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back here at Fort Laramie High School with 104 to go in this contest. St. Mary's leads by one, 47-46 on the Ultimate Outdoor School Board. Yeah, I expect St. Mary's to, I think they're probably going to stay with that zone look. That's they are there in the lead now, so certainly Lexington has to play against it. And we'll see what response Lexington has. They do go to that zone. Look, look for the freshman Fogel moving behind that zone along the baseline area. And with the ball being taken out underneath the basket, they've moved Parks down to protect the rim. This is Fogel on the left side as he gets the ball. Down to 58 seconds. Shot goes up and it's blocked by Austin Parks. Austin Parks with a big time block as number 21, Elijah Hudson, went for the little soft jumper there, and he gets rejected, and there'll be a foul. That can't be what they talked about in the huddle. Hudson was surprised to get the pass, almost you know, wasn't ready for it, and then just turned and tried to shoot a 15-footer with Parks right in front of him. That's not going to work. Elijah Hudson on the afternoon has got eight. Lexington does have six team fouls now, so next one will put the Riders at the line. And to trigger the ball in, this is Owens as he brings the ball up, and he is guarded heavily by A.J. Young. They'll swing it over to Solomon. Solomon gets it to Parks, and they're going to get Baden four up with the foul. I'm not sure why you would want to foul. You know, still a lot of time uh, yeah, left. Why you wouldn't put Parks at the line, as you mentioned, the excellent foul shooter. Shoots 80% from the line, and he's knocked in his last two. He's going to have a chance to up the ante here. Austin Parks at the line. He's got 20 on the afternoon. He misses yeah. that one, so 
Strategy pays off. And they're going to get Jace Turner on the foul here. Just their fourth as a team. So 43 seconds to go. St. Mary's up 47-46. Ravi's going to stay in that zone. Let's see if they can get Fogel a look again, maybe somewhere along that baseline where he's operated so well. This is A.J. Young with the ball. He's got Fogel on his right side. He'll go back to Young. Young goes in the middle of the floor. Back out to Depperschmidt. Young with the ball out top. This is Fogel, 17 seconds. Back to Young. Back over to Depperschmidt. And Lexington's going to take a timeout. We're going to keep it here with 12.5 seconds to go. St. Mary's leads 47 to 46. If St. Mary's ends up pulling this off, Tom, it'll be Lexington's first loss of the season. Yeah, and then on that possession, again, don't really seem very comfortable. The Minutemen, what, on how do they want to attack that St. Mary's zone? That possession, most of the time, the ball was in the hands of A.J. Young and Alex Depperschmidt. Nothing against those two, but... They got two combined points at this point well, in the game. Well, I was and thinking the same thing. You've got Fogel on the right side, and they didn't even go to the right side, didn't look at him. He didn't cut towards the basket, so you know the play wasn't intended for him. So I'm as puzzled as you are. Right. Did look to be a little bit confused. Not really a plan on what they wanted to do. Obviously, going to have to have a plan now because we're down <laughs> to final possession time. And uh, you got 12 seconds to get that plan figured out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so a great day of high school basketball here at Fort Laramie for the second annual MLK Classic. We've had some great games already as Liberty Benton defeated Anna in the first game and Rushi comes back and wins the second game. Stick around. We've got plenty more here on WSN as Marion Local plays, Fort Laramie plays, and uh, Tom and I will be covering all the action today. So here we go, partner, with 12.5 seconds to go. St. Mary's leads 47-46. Lexington will take the ball out of bounds on the side. Fogel will trigger the ball in. Baden Forop is at the high post. And now Coach Hegemeyer is going to call a timeout. Hegemeyer is going to take a timeout. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues Friday night. Join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage all around, all season long. Fridays at 10 on WTLW. Our scoreboard sponsor today is Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. Not sure what Coach Hegemeyer saw there, maybe something in the lineup uh, or the way that Lexington was lined up that concerned him. Uh, I'm guessing he's going to stick with that zone look. It's uh, because Lexington just doesn't seem comfortable against it or know how to attack it, but... Tom, your, your thoughts on the last possession as far as from a coaching standpoint, do you like to take the shot with four to five seconds to give your kids a chance to rebound, or do you like to take that shot knowing that that's it? No, I think you want to give a chance to have a put back if it's there. And, uh, you know, and the thing is most high school coaches have a lot of plays that they can go to, whether it's just some type of screen and roll or some type of screen away from the ball against man-to-man -man defenses. Don't have as many. Uh, quick hitters against zone type looks. Not to say Lexington does it. We'll see what we get. So here's Depper Schmidt with the ball. He's guarded heavily. Oh. They're <laughs> going to get Coben Owens on the foul. And you know what's happening now, Tom. Well, yeah, they, they jumped a man to man as soon as the ball was inbounded. So disguise it as a zone, jump to man to man. And they have two more fouls to give. So they can run this clock pretty much down before. There's the fifth there's one. The other foul or the sixth the one. one. Galvin Husty had the ball, and he gets fouled out top. So now we're at 16 fouls for St. Mary's yeah. and 17 fouls for Lexington. So they can't give the foul now, but they've basically cut in half the time that Lexington has to get a shot. So Fogel inbounds it. And He'll they go back to the zone. <laughs> Depper Schmidt with the ball. Depper Schmidt three from the left side. Off the mark. Ball goes out of bounds. It's going to go back to St. Mary's. So Alex Depper Schmidt tries to knock in the three down one. And there's 2.6 yeah. seconds to go. I'm going to give some credit to the wily old veteran on that St. Mary's bench. He called that timeout to, to talk to his guys about jumping into man, committing a couple of fouls, which they had to give, shortening the game up, then went back to zone. And, uh, again, a Depperschmidt, not a big scorer, is the one that ends up taking the shot. And here you see. <laughs> Great job, Coach Hagemeyer. He, he did, you know. He didn't uh, just fall into the gym yesterday. <laughs> right. He's been at this a little bit, had a little bit of success. 
Adams gets fouled. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it a three-point game here with eight-tenths of a second to go. Coach Hegemeyer says, get off the line, fellas. Yeah, if they, if they can grab it and, and chuck it 80 feet and it goes in, you live with that. And he knocks in the first one, so he gives St. Mary's the 48-46 lead with eight-tenths of a second to go. A huge win for St. Mary's if they can pull this off. Lexington would fall from the ranks of the unbeaten. You really don't mind him missing this here. We'll see. And, and he, he knocks it. it in. It's a three-point lead. So they'll try to get the ball inbounds. The ball goes up, and it's going to be intercepted, and that'll do it. That will do it. St. Mary's with the win. Are they saying a foul? Or they no, no, we're over. That's it. So St. Mary's wins a big one here at the MLK Classic, 49-46. Tom, your thoughts on the game? Nah, just back and forth all the way. Nobody could put any type of distance between each other. And, again, it came down to a chess match at last four minutes. Uh, St. Mary's playing some zone. Lexington a little hesitant to attack. And I think Coach Hegemeyer made some great calls down the stretch. And, and a big all-around all game by Austin Parks. He showed, uh, he showed why the hype is real today. Just excellent on both ends of the floor. That'll do it from Fort Laramie High School as St. Mary's knocks Lexington from the ranks of the unbeaten as they win 49-46. Tom Bonsas and I'm Danny Holbrook and our entire WSN crew saying God bless and we'll see you next time.